I thought two great, great plays by Christian, uh, you know, diving to knock that pass down, and he really swallowed that screen pass. Is it, is it just his instincts kind of being in the right spot? There? Yeah, I mean, Christian, and he's a little banged up too, so I was even surprised. I don't know if you saw, he was kind of coming in and out during um, that drive, but he really, uh, he, he came up huge at the end. You know, sometimes that's what we've been lacking this year is the killer instinct, and you kind of saw it at the end there. One of the things that I was upset with the team about is they're all yelling at the sidelines saying to take a knee when... I would hope that the kids would be yelling at the coaches when we want to take a knee telling us to go for it. Um, so, you know, Christian came up with a killer instinct towards the end there, and that's, you know, happy to see that. Um, you know, he's played great for us all year. Um, he's one of the kids on the team this year that you see getting better every single game. Um, that means he's a great listener and he works hard every practice. How key was that score at the end of the first half after they had gone up 7 nothing? you know, they're at home, you know, just to be able to answer? Yeah, huge. We, we couldn't get out of our own way. You know, I, I think, you know, John does a great job there. It's obviously a terrific program. Um, the kids played hard tonight, but I just felt like in the first half we were we were literally doing everything we possibly could to give the game away. Um, you know, we were we, we signaled in a wrong play when we were on the goal line. We ran the wrong play. Um, you know, just weird, weird, bizarre things like that. So it wasn't you know it wasn't a good night for Marblehead at all. Um, fortunately, things turned out well for us on the scoreboard, but it just you know it just was a, a bad night for us. Jim, early in the game, the uh, North End was able to get around the end. They couldn't get anything in the middle. The middle of your defense was outstanding all game long, but they seemed to be able to get to the edge. What did you change for the second half? Didn't change anything. So we, we I mean, that was, their, that was their top play against Beverly, and really the week before against Lincoln Sudbury was one of their best plays. So we worked against it all week long. And, you know, it's it literally, it, it simply is about the angles that you take. And our kids took really poor angles, and then they also sat back on their heels and waited for the guy to come to them and wait for the block. And you can't pick which side you're going to go. You have to use the guy who's in front of you use his body to make the tackle um, and we just didn't do that towards the end we started doing that a little bit better um, and so all it is really is that the, the kids just weren't kind of doing what we had practiced all week um, and they, they, they did it a little bit you know towards the end and that that sort of was the story of the whole game was that we just sort of seemed in a fog you know again the whole game it's it's disappointing you know I'm disappointed I thought we had some okay practices but uh, we have a long way to go kind of his ability to just get lost in secondaries just because you think like all you got to do is cover 22 right and he just always finds yeah. some holes back there is it just something that naturally he knows where where to go I yeah so this is, this is the be? third team that we've played in a row now that has adjusted their defense specifically for Connor where they're leaving a third person over him so you know obviously we're trying to do different things to take advantage of that bring him one way run the other you know obviously you know anyone basic stuff anyone's gonna do but what he's very good at now that teams are doing this is not running his fastest and not running a hard route and just waiting, seeing letting the, letting their coverage develop and then finding the seam within the coverage. Um, you know, and that's not ideal for what we want to do with our plays and the way that our quarterback's doing his footwork, but it, it's been working for us. Um, it's just difficult to plan. You know, if you're a control freak as a coach, you want to do this, this, and this, and it takes a little bit of time, and, and sometimes it causes Miles to wait too long. He's patient, though. Yeah, he's, he's almost, very, so both guys been... are patient, but it's not ideal. You know, yeah. eventually it's going to nip us in the bud. You know, we've gotten away with it a little bit because teams are trying to take Connor away, and so you can sort of take advantage of those scenes that they're giving you there. But to come on, all those long distances to go too. So it's almost like, well, you have, you might as well, you know, since yeah. it's such a long distance to go anyway. Yeah, no, well abso absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, that's and that's what it's been this year. So we've been fortunate with that. Coach, can you speak to keeping the guys motivated, um, or you've been trying to keep Which, them motivated? Yeah. <laughs> no, you know, of course, coming off the season you had last year, and you know, other you know particulars in terms of how successful um, you guys have been. Just the formula I've been using this year has been swearing a lot, um, inventing new swears, um, shortening my swears to just constable, uh, co consonants, <laughs> consonants, and uh, and then using uh, hand signals that, that represent swears. Um, that's been my motivational technique this year. Um, and then taking the parent phone calls that follow. And I, I don't know, I've run out of things to do. It's, you know, trying to use little things like today, you know, we had the Globe and the Herald pick against us. You know, that always helps. I appreciate that. Um, but, um, you know, it, it, it's different. Every team's different what you come up with to use. But with these guys, it's mostly a lot of swearing and threatening. 
know, bodily harm, things so like that. So old fashioned football. Old fashioned football, yeah, <laughs> with, with lawsuits. You know, I mean, I, I don't, I don't, you know, it really is. It, it's been a frustrating year to this point because we've had um, frustrating games to this point, and um, you know, eventually these guys, like any any group of kids, will do. Eventually, they'll, they'll the light will come through the cloud and they'll see their way through. But, well, a three and zero, stay frustrated. Yeah, exactly. But it's you know, Mike Giardi.